So welcome back everyone. So it's nice to be home after seven days on the Jolly Mountain Fire. I, uh, I feel beat up, not as young as I used to be. Uh, it was a lot of work. Uh, the day uh, started at uh, 5.30, the alarm, excuse me, 4.30 a.m. The alarm went off and uh, get up and breakfast starts at five, morning me meeting at six. You're on the line usually around 7.30. And I was getting bed to bed anywhere between 12 and midnight. So some one, one night we had uh, about uh, four and a half hours sleep. And it, uh, after, after uh, a week or so, it just kind of wears you down. A lot of lessons learned uh, for me on this fire. As you may remember, uh, a couple years ago, my friend Alan and I, who's uh, fighting fire, forest fire with, uh, or wildland fire with the Forest Service, this is his second year, did a video, I think it was called War Bag, where we had some, uh, some ideas on what we wanted in our packs, I'll tell you that a good portion of that has completely been turned upside down because of one thing, weight. Weight has become a big issue for me. Trying to work with a pack, I was able to uh, strip down almost seven, six or seven pounds out of my pack with things that just didn't need to be there. So we'll talk more about that later. So as those of you who follow my Instagram page, um, and Facebook will know that we have a new addition to the family. After 12 years of faithful service, my, my big saw, my 441 still, it's time for it to retire. It's getting a little bit long in the tooth, uh, starting to, uh, the suspension is starting to break down, and well, there's, it's probably got a lot of life left in it. For just a wood cutting saw, it'll probably who knows, maybe get another 12 years out of it. But what I found on this fire was uh, I was a couple days kind of pressed into service as a, as a sawyer. And I didn't have access to a nice big pro, pro saw like this. We had uh, an agency saw, which I believe was a steel 311, which is not a professional saw. It's a smaller cut time of a, maybe kind of a homeowner woodcutter type of saw. And it did the job, was able to get it done. It was uh, never had any problems. It's actually quite a brilliant little saw, but I really missed uh, having the features of a professional saw. And I would have felt a lot safer and more comfortable in a couple situations that I was in with that said saw. So how come the question is going to come up? Why doesn't the department buy professional saws? Why don't you have the best tools um, that uh, at your disposal for this dangerous and, and, um, and exhausting work? Uh, the answer is, is it comes down to money. Uh, volunteer departments in the country are most of them are really struggling. You know, it's the money is tight with those and we can't afford to buy professional saws like that. And that goes same into packs, wildland packs and gear and boots and equipment. They just simply don't have the money uh, to supply us with the best equipment that uh, is so important. So many of us who really take this seriously um, have to uh, purchase our own equipment. Um, me, for example, I've purchased my own pack and my own boots and and m majority of all of the equipment in here is all comes from me because, you know, I. It's important to me to have those things and it's important to have every tool that I need to make my job easier. And I'm not getting any younger and anything I can do to make my job easier is, um, is, is of importance to me. So that really, that this last week on that Jolly Mountain Fire pushed me over the edge to purchasing a new saw. And primarily for the reason is I'll be taking the saw uh, with me. Um, um, the agency saw will be in there, it's fine. I'm not gonna let anyone else use it. It'll be my, for my personal use, but I want it. I need it for um, any type of a big falling job that I wanna have. And I was uncomfortable with taking the 12 year old 441 with his, you know, it's got a lot of hard, hard. I mean, I've just run the guts out of this thing on chainsaw milling and, and I just don't know when and if it's gonna let me down. So I don't wanna to take this saw on a fire. I don't trust it. The 441 has no, been a notoriously terrible saw for a lot of people. I, on the other hand, have had really good luck with mine. I've never had an issue. It's as predictable uh, to me. We know each other. I know its quirks. I know, I know everything about it because I've spent so much time with it. But I was talking to, when I was trying to spec out which saw to buy at the saw shop, uh, yesterday uh, we were talking about this and he said you know this has really been a problem saw we have actually refused to sell it for years and years because it's it's, it's just was never designed very well it's um uh, he said that there were like somewhere at, at or near 150 line changes on this saw meaning changes in mid-production uh, recalls on the saw it has had a really poor reputation 
uh, I know with the Forest Service that the, of the sawyers that I've spoken with. And so even though it's introduced and it's been a good saw for me, um, I decided to get away from it and go with the 461. So let's take a closer look at this, uh, this beautiful, beautiful saw. There it is. Probably the finest saw. Well, I think it was without a question, the finest saw money can buy for hard professional use, the new steel 461. Man, rave reviews on this saw is when I before, I, I thought long and hard about this and there really never was another option apart from this. As soon as I started talking to local, local followers uh, that have been using this saw now for, for quite some time, uh, they just rave about it, they just love it. This particular saw is brand new. You'll notice it doesn't have a bar on it yet. And that's because uh, the dealer didn't have the bar that I wanted. I run a 32 inch lightweight bar and that had to be ordered in. So I didn't want the factory steel bar. So he ordered it in and, and I just have to go down there and pick it up when it comes in. So what we have here is a, um, a regional saw specific to our region. We have the four, it's a 461, they call it an R, meaning it has a full body wrap a wrap around handle, but a lot of saws, the handle stops right here. You don't have this reach. This is a, this is something that's not available in all parts of the country. It's a Western, it's a Western option. Uh, and, and it's, uh, I, I just can't imagine having a saw like this without it. It gives you the flexibility to hold the saw and work the saw on so many more angles than just having it the other side or just having it on the left side. I felt uh, at a huge disadvantage with that little 331 saw when I was working, bucking that big cedar log that was on fire by not having this and limbing, uh, very, very much missed it. So this is the, the R, this is what you want. Um, you may not be able to get it in all parts of the country, but out west, pretty much every saw you're gonna buy is gonna have this. So uh, one last thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna have this saw uh, completely um, uh, gone through, the, the cylinder head taken off, and um, there's and, and some piston work, piston and exhaust work done on it. We have a uh, local saw shop who works with all of the professional loggers that, that, for, that does uh, a, a really amazing job on these saws by getting more power out of them and opening them up. And uh, without sacrificing reliability, he's really a maestro. And it's a uh, $150 to go through and re-pulls the piston out and does the piston work, is exhaust all of that. And this thing will go from a, uh, a respectable, <laughs> a respectable uh, powerhouse to an absolute fire-breathing dragon that will pull itself out of your hand if you're not careful. So that, uh, I'll, more on that in the future. So uh, one other thing I want to talk to you before I close um, about also some serious issues that we ran into with other saws uh, by not having, keeping, getting, having, not being able to keep them up and running because of lack of a simple bit, simple parts kit uh, that everyone should have had, myself included, uh, was not as prepared as I would like to have been. So because we did so much falling work uh, with, and we had uh, three saws going, uh, when they were running, when we were doing some brushing out with our strike team, I learned some valuable lessons and I have put together a kit uh, that I would strongly recommend you consider some of these things if you are going to find yourself in this role. We didn't have many of these things and, and, and it did cause some problems. It, everything was overcame, of course, but it could have been better. So I want to show with you the things that I've put together. And this is bare bones minimum because weight to me is so, so critical after uh, after being all day on that saw and with pack and all that, uh, this is this is what I came up with. A couple of small wedges. These wedges, we had guys were having pinched uh, bars and saw in different logs and they were bucking and things and having these little guys, if you don't have your main followers belt, they don't take up much space and you can include them in a small bag in your kit. Also, Files. Most guys had files. I've got three files here. I've got three brand new chainsaw filing files and a flat raker file. Not one of us had a raker file. And because the guys we were cutting and doing um, brushing out in the rocks and on the ground, our chains were getting absolutely hammered and they took a lot of filing. And then what was happening is the filing was, the rakers were sticking up for the depth gauges so high that they wouldn't cut properly because we didn't have this simple tool right here, a $4 raker gauge. So this is also gonna be included in the kit, as well as a spare uh, scrunch, uh, a chainsaw wrench right here. Of course, guys had their primary ones and this is my primary one here that I keep on my belt and I drilled a hole in it, put a piece of paracord on there uh, so I can get to it quickly and I don't have to 
constantly undo my pack and go digging for it or put this in a pocket where it's going to skewer me if I fall. One guy uh, lost his for some time and didn't have one. If you don't have this tool, your sock can be out of action and it, it just right away. So having a spare one of these, also I saw the, the wisdom in that. Uh, a carburetor tool, uh, that depending on your abilities to adjust the carburetor, an extra spark plug. Uh, that is so, so important. And this is a, a, what's nice about steel is many of the saws share the same spark plug. So if I have another guy with a different saw, maybe one guy's got a 441, we can, I can help him out and swap that back and forth. And a file handle. A file handle, this is a steel file handle that will fit on both the raker or the depth gauge file as well as the chain file and the Torx tool. This is the factory Torx tool that came with the saw if I needed to if I had a, a handle backing out or something, um, this will pretty much disassemble the entire saw. Two sets of earplugs, uh, for one for me, myself and one for my swamper if, I, if he doesn't have them. We should, of course, have all of these. An extra factory elasto steel pull, pull rope. You know, that's, again, th this thing goes down or breaks, you know, we got a serious problem. You have a saw out of commission. And then some internal parts. Um, these, I never did have issue with them and I never have, but I went down um, and I talked to the steel mechanics that work on this logger saws and I asked them, I told them what I was doing and I asked them, what would you put in a kit? What would you put in your replacement kit for spare parts? And this is what they recommended. They said, put two bar nuts in there. And I'll, I'll test to that because we did have, I think, two guys that lost one of their bar nuts when they were changing their bar or doing changing a chain or something and weren't able to find them and they were running with one. So having a couple extra bar nuts, I can put those in there. As well as these are a kind of wear um, bearings that slide into the outer case. I've had these things fall off and lose them and a chain can tear up the case and they don't weigh much or anything. So I've got two of those for upper and lower. As well as a new pilot bearing uh, that will go here for the um, the clutch and the sprocket, the chain sprocket right there, a factory pilot bearing in case that were to go out. And finally, three clutch springs. I'd never heard of a clutch spring breaking, but these can be replaced easily with your Leatherman, which I carry on my line gear. Uh, and if you have if one of these breaks, your whole saw goes down. And again, this also fits a wide variety of saws. So that the, we can make those repairs in the field too. So that's a pretty small set of, to, set of tools or parts there that could make the difference and it doesn't weigh very much. And then finally, I'm gonna put a killer tree tape here. This is universally understood on the wildland fire ground. Uh, this is a tree that's dangerous. You know, maybe a tree that I'm not comfortable with taking down that I want to leave for a more experienced faller. I can flag that and everyone knows when they see it to stay away from that. Uh, so I've got that there as well, just as opposed to orange ribbon. You, you kind of get worn out with ribbon on the fires because there's so many ribbons going up for escape routes and for the, the dozers guys, the dozer boss puts his own stuff on there and vice versa. And so this is kind of universally understood. So all of this stuff fits neatly in my recycled firefighter pouch that I have fit. I've pressed this into so many, so many different rolls and it's always such a handy thing. It just works good because it's long enough to fit your files in and that's what I like about it. So I'll just keep all it in there. Now I'm not going to carry this stuff with me all the time. Again, I'm super, super fanatical about weight after this last deployment. So this is, of course, this is a heavy bag, but it, I, I don't really care too much because I usually, if I'm going to be working on the chainsaw, the engine's going to be close by. I can take this and I can throw it into the pouch the side pouch on my line gear um, and have it. And I could even take it out and throw it on the ground if I didn't want to pack it around as I'm cutting and options. So there's a few more options here too. And I don't, haven't completely flushed out how I'm gonna do this. I, I would like to have a way of mounting my, my wedges uh, on my line gear. I love the Grizzly Peak Enterprises. This is uh, my man up in Idaho. I for, sorry, I forget his name, builds these. He's a faller. Uh, he's a timber faller by trade and his daughter was telling me at night he comes home and he makes these, these aluminum, of course you know the my favorite axe scabbard there. If you want to call him and get these, um, his number is 208-783-2337. He's up in Idaho, Grizzly Peak Enterprises, and he makes uh, some really great stuff. Um, 
and this, of course, is scabbard. So I, I actually, I talked to him yesterday, or, or I sent an email yesterday to someone there um, and said, I'd like to talk to you about maybe figuring out a way of doing a custom design or something that I could carry this ax and the wedges on my line gear, something that I could snap on quickly uh, if I needed them and not have to, because I can't wear a faller's belt, because I, I got that big belt, you know, the big waist belt on the line gear, and that you just can't have all that stuff around your waist, and this has been kind of a problem. I could take my line gear off, but it may be a situation where I need to wear it and run the saw, so I haven't quite figured that one out yet. Now, of course, a spare chain. None of us had spare chains on the fire, and I was able to keep mine going, fortunately, but I was only one rock away. You know, like some of the other guys, they had a hard time, and we did a lot of filing, and, and we actually had to go and because the, we couldn't get chains from the supply, they didn't have any, we had to go in town and the guys had to buy their own chains because uh, they didn't have them in the engines and neither did I. So that was a lesson learned. Of course, a trauma kit right there. Uh, one other thing that I might be adding, I don't know yet. Here's a, this is a, a shoulder pad that goes on your suspenders, your line gear. If you're gonna be carrying the saw a long ways, they're really kind of painful on your shoulder. And this is a leather pad that threads in through the, through the loop uh, over the shoulder with the leather side out and the felt inside. And I may, I, I'll, I don't know if I'm gonna put that on my line gear. I don't, I mean, I don't, it all depends on how much, how much time I spend on the saw. So that's kind of what, oh, also what I will learn was this. I'm gonna be incorporating this into my kit too. Uh, our strike team leader, uh, old Tom, he was, a, well, he was, I really admired him. He was an excellent firefighter. He had 32 years of experience, I think. And I learned so much from him on this last fire. And one thing that he carried was a small folding saw, and I, uh, I'm gonna incorporate that as well. The, this one here has got a quick attach on it, so I have actually threaded onto my belt, or my waist belt here, the other end of it, that I could snap that on, because we were in some, we were trying to do mop up, and we were really struggling with small branches and vine maples that were, you know, just too small to get in there and fool with a saw, but just kind of hitting you in the face. And he had this and that made a big difference. So I'm gonna have this not always on my pack, but I'm gonna have it there if I do need it. So that, uh, and of course, the fight finishing up the bugs, goggles and the chainsaw chaps, it goes without saying, but that makes up my, kind of my fallers kit. And I just need to figure out a way to kind of incorporate this with the line gear. But this is, um, I think this is a pretty solid kit. If you put something together like this, you would be, have everything that you could, you do everything you could possibly do to keep your saw running and, and do the best job that you can. So, so that is that. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.